In this video, we're going to build a real-time React chat app that you can see behind me. Most professional projects eventually need a real-time chat element to it, no matter what sector you're in. The difference from sector to sector can easily be managed and customized by using extensions, and we'll go into more details in this later on. There are challenges of building such systems from complex infrastructure to performance to security, but do not worry, I'll show you how simple it is by using a platform called Comet Chat. Hi, I'm Eddie Jowd. You might know me from my YouTube channel or my work in the open source community. I'm an open source full stack engineer with over 15 years experience and I'm a passionate advocate of open source. I'm super excited to collaborate with Comet Chat, an up and coming SaaS startup offering voice, video and chat solutions for industries ranging from online marketplaces and dating apps to health. Comet Chat's robust suite of cloud hosted text, voice and video solutions ranging from simple drag and drop plugins to UI kits, APIs and fully customizable SDKs plus a host of unique ready-to-use extensions, which will seamlessly integrate in your website and apps quickly, easily, and securely, saving you countless hours, which will also contribute to the growing engagement on your website. Currently supporting over 10 plus programming languages with this number increasing. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build a React chat app using Comet Chat's UI kit. It's simple to build, allows for really cool customization, comes with loads of extensions, and only takes a few minutes to build. Follow along with me here and then try it out for yourself for free. Let's get started. First of all, go to cometchat.com to sign up. Click on start for free, then click on sign up. Fill in your name, email address, and password. Your phone number is optional. Now you've registered for a free account on Comet Chat, you'll get two emails. The first one is to verify your email, and I'm pretty sure you're all used to this. It's always good to check that you have the right email address. The second one will be a welcome email from the founder, Anant, with some useful information and links. Then you'll be taken to your dashboard and immediately be able to create an app. The app name is so you can easily identify your apps within your apps list on your dashboard. This can be easily renamed later on if required within the app settings. It's best to choose a region closest to your users. It's not as easy to change this later, but it's still possible. Don't worry, everyone around the world can still use your app whichever region you select. Technology is a multi-select dropdown where you can pick your relevant technology. In our case, we'll choose React Web. Use cases for the type of sector you will be in, for example, healthcare or gaming. Now we've created an app, we're taken to the app page. App ID is unique to each app. It's the namespace, the domain where all your users can communicate, but users cannot communicate across app IDs. The auth key can be used for user authentication, the region that you set earlier, and on this quick start page, we're presented with some sample apps and documentations. And you're probably thinking, how many apps should I create? It's recommended to have two apps, development and production. There should be a single app, irrespectively of the number of platforms. Do not create separate apps for every platform. If you do, your users on different platforms will not be able to communicate with each other. Chat widget. The chat widget simplifies the process of integrating a chat. As a developer, you'd only need to toggle the widget settings from our dashboard and customize it to fit your needs. In the analytics section, you get monthly active users, total users, and total messages. The graphs are coming very soon. API and auth keys. The auth key can be used to create and log in users and only to be used in your code client side during development. The REST API key can be used to perform any Comet Chat operation. Be sure to use the auth key and not the full access API key. This ensures that even if a user or a bot with bad intention reverse engineers your code, they will only be able to log into Comet Chat and not call any other APIs. By default, five users are created for you. And you get the typical CRUD, the create, the read, update, and delete. For users you want to stop having access but don't want to delete because you want to keep the history, you can deactivate them. And then in the future, you can find them in the inactive list and you can reactivate them if you need to. As your list gets bigger, there is a search. By clicking on a user, you can see their settings. You can also manage their groups, friends, and tokens. A role is a category for a group of similar users. For example, you may want to group your premium users together using a role called premium. You then use this to filter users, enable disable features by writing conditional code. A group can be used for multiple users to communicate with each other on a particular topic or interest. There are three types of groups. Public, where anyone can join. Password protected, where any user with a valid password can join. And private, where only invited users are allowed. Under messages, it will list all your messages. 
and it will show you who the sender is, who the receiver is, and the receiver type. And you have the usual management tools of delete, ban, and kick. The in-flight message moderation extension allows you to moderate messages manually. On the extensions page, you'd have to add the in-flight moderation extension. Once enabled, messages have to get approved for the sender to receive it, and it disappears from the list. Rejected messages get deleted and does not reach the intended receiver. Kick is available for group conversations. If the user is spamming or is annoying, they can simply be kicked out of the group. Ban is available for group conversations. If a user is banned, they will not be able to perform any actions in the group until they are unbanned. This is useful for schools and classes. Now in the extension section, this is where it gets really interesting. Building a great chat product does not consist of just voice, video and text chat. It's much more than that. This is where extensions are our answer to this. There are over 20 available extensions. These are grouped into notifications, user experience, user engagement, moderation. My favorite extensions are sentiment analysis. It helps you understand the sentiment of the message. Voice transcription allows you to convert an audio message into text. The message translator extension translates messages into multiple languages. With these three extensions, your chats and your groups could be really inclusive for everybody. Bots are special users in Comet Chat who can send and receive messages autonomously. Comet Chat can send webhook events that notify your application anytime an event happens on your account. Webhook data is sent as JSON in the post request as part of the body. These are the app settings we used when we were creating the app at the beginning. So you'll recognize a lot of the fields there, but you have additional fields. You have team and billing and you have deleting the app. Under plans and billing, it will show your current plan and how many days you have left if there is an active credit card in the list. Now you've seen the platform and the awesome features it has, let's jump into the code and have a look at building a simple React app where we can integrate the chat really quickly and easily. And you probably have an app already built where you want to integrate real-time chat, group chat, video calls. And that's why I've got different sample apps to show you for different use cases like healthcare, community, and events. So first of all, let's build a simple React app. You probably recognize this part already. Now you can see our React app has been created. Let's start it up and make sure that it works as expected before we make any code changes. Now you can see our React app is running with no code changes. This is a vanilla React app and it's running on port localhost colon 3000. Next, let's open VS Code so we can have a look at adding more code to our project. We can do this by typing code space dot. You can use any IDE or text editor that you wish. This probably looks very familiar to you if you know React. You've got a public folder, a source folder, and node modules folder where all your dependencies go. So now we've got our app running. Let's go have a look at the quick start and see what we should do next. Next, sign up to Comet Chat if you haven't already, so therefore you can get your API keys. Then next, we need to install Comet Chat's Pro chat dependencies using NPM. So we paste in this line, we run it as normal, it will add it to our package.json, and then we'll have that dependency available in node modules. The next step, you need to create a constants.js file in the constants folder under the source folder. And here you can add your app ID, your app region, and your auth key. And you get these from the Comet Chat platform that you saw earlier. Let me remind you now, and I'll show you again. If you're on your dashboard and you've created an app already, you can click on your app. And if you haven't, you can create your app. And if you go back to earlier in the video, you'll see how to do that. But let's go into my first app. And straight away, we're presented with the information that we need. And you can click on these buttons to easily copy and make sure you get the entire token and also don't get any extra spaces which often happens and then things don't work. Then next you'll want to import the constants file that you can see on our line 7. Let me highlight that for you. And then after that we'll want to import the npm library Comet Chat Pro Chat that we also installed earlier on line 8. In the quick start, it shows you doing it as part of the index.js file. You can do this, but I prefer separating it out. It's better practice to have it in a separate file. Therefore, you can ignore the file. Therefore, you can use different tokens for different environments. There are lots of ways you can make improvements to that if it's in a separate file to avoid things being committed by mistake. So again, I'm going to copy this code and we're going to add it to our React project. As you can see, the code provided I've now added to the project. After Comet Chat has been initialized, and the promise has completed, as you can see in the then, 
We now do a console log just to make sure that Comet Chat is happy and all the connections are happened. And then we display the React app. Now, if we start the app again with npm start, it should look, look the same as before. Nothing would have changed. It should look the same. However, we should have a console log. And we do have a console log. Initialization complete successfully. So we now know that we've got a working React app and we've also got Comet Chat, chat initialized. And it seems to be happy with all our tokens as well. You'll notice initialize and login are kept separate from the UI kit. This is because the UI kit is a set of reusable components and the authentication is kept separate. So we've reached our first milestone. We have our working React app and we also have Comet Chat connecting and working as we saw from the console log. So next, let's create a login page. So therefore we can log in as one of our users that we've created on the Comet Chat platform. So to create a login component, we'll need an auth context. And here's the file behind me. I'm not going to go through this in too much detail. You can find more about this in the link below to our GitHub sample project. But it controls the login, logout, and also the history. The next, we want to create a login component. Here's one that got prepared earlier. This might look familiar to you. We have bootstrap and we also have a form with form submit. And we're asking for the login UID. And when the form is submitted, we're going to do a console log with the username so we can just check it works because we haven't got a landing page yet. We'll get to that with the actual use cases. We'll also know login is successful with this console log happening after the login function. And we've also added a little bit of styling here as well. There are some dependencies we will need. So let's stop the running application. Let's install these dependencies. And then in app.js, we can also add a route to our login. And it looks like this. And now running the app, you can see we've got the login form where we can put the UID from the Comet Chat platform. As you can see, the initialization is still complete. So now we haven't got a page off this and so we do try and log in, we won't go anywhere. However, we should see notification in the console that it has been successful. Let's try it. On the Comet Chat platform, if we go to the users list, let's pick out a user. So now we've got the user, I'm just going to paste in the username and let's hit login. Great, as you can see, it says form submitted with the user we just pasted, but also login successful. Now we know we've logged in the user against the Comet Chat platform. By default, five users are created for you, but if you want to add your own users, it's very straightforward. You go to the users down the left, then you click add user, and you give it a username and a UID. I highly suggest having the UID the same as the UID in your app. So you don't have to handle two different UIDs. You can give it a role. You can put an avatar link in if you want. This could be to your CDN or an image hosted anywhere else. A link in any metadata that you wish. Don't forget, there's also some information down the right hand side that tells you a bit more about each field. So yes, I created the user via the Comet Chat platform. However, in the real world, your server side application will communicate with Comet Chat's server-side API to create the user when they register on your platform. So it either be done via the SDK or API to API. Once the user is created on Comet Chat, there needs to be a sync between your application and Comet Chat. For example, if the user updates their profile picture or any of their details. And the user could also delete their account on your platform. Don't forget to make sure that your application deletes it off Comet Chat as well. Let's show the UI React Kit. It looks more impressive. As you can see behind me, we've gone from the quick start now to the UI Kit, specifically the React UI Kit. And the React UI Kit is broken up into three sections. UI Unified, UI Screens, and UI Components. UI Components are the foundations, and these are wrapped by the UI Screens. And then the UI Screens can also be wrapped by the UI Unified to make it a lot easier for you. So the deeper you go, the more customization you can have, but the more work you need to put in. So a good place to start is the UI Unified. And it will look like something like this behind me. But let's try it out in our app. Next, we download the Comet Chats UI kit. So if you head over to their GitHub organization with all their open source projects, there are quite a few for different languages and platforms. But specifically, we want to look at the JavaScript React Chat UI kit. Then next, in your source folder, create a lib folder and add the Comet Chat library you've just downloaded. Next, let's create a component called Chat. And what you need to do is create a folder called Chat. And inside there, put index.js. And it's a straightforward React component, but we're importing styles as you normally would. And we're also importing Comet Chat Unified from the lib folder Comet Chat directory that we have just added. And all we need to do is add the component from the library Comet Chat Unified. And that's it. 
therefore after we simulate logging in we can then go to the chat route which is a private route and also loads our chat component that we've just created let's start it up and we should have a real-time chat app solution running thanks to comet chat so let's start the app as usual with npm start so now let's log in with the same user as we did before now I've logged in, you can see I've got a chat solution. So let me click on a user and we can actually see the chat that has occurred before. Let's simulate a conversation between two of us. So on the left, I've logged in with Pamela and we're talking to Colin. So on the right, I've logged in as Colin and we're talking to Pamela. So let's have a conversation. As you can see from one browser to the other, it immediately goes in real time. And as you can see with the green dots, both are online and chatting. So this is a private message or a DM, as some of the people like to call it nowadays, between two people. But also there are group messages that you could do. So we could start a group message. There's two already. Let's create a new group. And we'll call it Comet Chat Community. And there are three different types of groups that we can make. But let's make this one private. And if we click on the more menu option at the top, we can also view members, add members and ban members. And we could leave the group and delete and exit it. So let's add Colin to the group. We were just chatting to them in a direct message, but we also want to invite Danielle as well. Now they've been added. You can also see now on Colin's chat on the right hand side, the group chat has already opened uh, with a notification. So all three of us now can chat. And you can see Colin's really excited to have a group chat. And we can also have other chat options like send a picture. So let's send a picture. Now you can see the photo has been sent to the group. So all three people or more people if you add later can see the photo and can reply. And then in the menu section on the right, you also see a collection of photos, videos and docs. Especially when the chat moves along fast, if you want to find the photo that someone shared, you can find it very easily. You also notice some menu icons down the left, which is our chat that's going on at the moment, our friends list, our group chat message list as well, and also some extra options for our account. If we want to update notifications or if we want to report a problem. If you've got this app up and running yourself, go have a click around and have a play. I just realized we added Danielle by mistake, so we can actually remove Danielle. Now Danielle has left the group and it also shows that in the group chat. So everyone is aware who's involved in the chat, but you can also look at it again on the right hand side if you want an overview list of who's in the group. And you can also change the scope of the person. You can make them a moderator or an administrator. Also, I want to make you aware that all the tabs along the bottom that we just saw for user list, group list and menu options are React components. So you can hide any that you need to that you don't want available on your app. As you can see, we didn't add any extra code, but we're able to have all these awesome features and also do a video and voice call. And it's straight away in real time, really fast. We've now got the option to decline and accept the call. But as you can see, I'm calling myself from one browser to the other. So it's me in all the browsers. But you get the idea. Why don't you experiment and try with your friends? When you build an app, send them a link and let your friends try using it as well. We're going to get into the next section in a minute where you can customize this a lot further. I'm going to show you the different customizations for different use cases, as I mentioned before. Also remember the UI kit is open source. So do get involved in the conversation on GitHub. Now it's going to get even more exciting. We're actually going to look at three specific use cases that I mentioned before, and we're going to have a look at how easy it is to add real time chat to an existing application and also how we can customize that for three different use cases. And there's plenty more use cases that we can cover in the future. And you can see I've got a sample app behind me. I'm going to log in with a user and I'm going to show you how to add the real time chat. Now I've logged in, we're presented with three example apps. We're going to start off with the live events. And what you'll notice about the live events is there is no chat on the right hand side. We're going to add this now. Again, this is a React app and it's very similar to before. We have downloaded the Comet Chat library and added it to the lib folder in our project. And then you can see from the code here, it matches what's on our webpage, World's Best Live Music Show 2020. But let's add the chat. So if we go to prodocs.cometchat.com, we can see what documentation is available. If we go to the React section and then we go to UI screens, and if we scroll down to Comet Chat message list screen, First of all, we need to import Comet Chat message list screen from the lib Comet Chat component. Then we'll put in the example code where we can pass in some props to the component that we've just imported and we save it to a variable chat with screen. And then next, we want to use the variable chat with screen on the right hand side of our live event. 
If we save that, now if we come back to our live event example, you'll see we have real-time chat on the screen. And we've got the group, Music Lovers, and we've got four members. Let's log in with another member and have a chat. It'll be similar to before, but I wanna show you some realistic examples of some of the conversations people might have. Now we've got two real-time chats on the screen from two different users. One person's at the front of the concert and one person's at the back. They can even send photos to each other to actually show their point of view. So there's a plus sign at the bottom, the user can click on it and you get a lot more options. If we click on the photo option, we can select a photo to send. And the other user can see where they are in the concert. And if we do the same from the other chat, they can see the other person is a lot further back and one person is a lot closer. Which person would you rather be? There also is live reactions. Add a heart to show that you really like what they sent and it appears immediately real time on the other person's screen. And we have the usual emojis that you're used to from all your other favorite platforms. As you can see from my screen, we've got audio and video call, but being at a concert, the audio call and the video call features are probably not needed and probably not a desired option as well. So we can easily hide these. We can easily find the component we want to hide and hide it with CSS. But now you can see on both the real-time chat, the options for video calling are now gone. There are some exciting extensions that you probably want to enable in a group chat at a live concert event. Let's go take a look at those on the platform. As you saw from earlier on, there are lots of extensions and each week there are new extensions appearing. But the ones we're gonna focus on now is Profanity Filter. Let's add the extension. It's now been enabled. And once it's installed and added, you can go to the Install tab across the top and you can find the extension that's been added and you can also customize it even further or disable and remove it. If we go to Settings, in addition to the default words provided by the platform, we can also add our own custom words. So for example, if I put the word Dope and Save, and then if we go back to our app and I write the word Dope, Therefore, the other users are notified that a message has been sent, but if it's in a sentence, it will get starred out. For example, like this. So the other people can understand the gist of your message and get a notification that you're still engaged in the conversation, but at least certain words are hidden. Another extension I'd like to show you, which I think is useful for a live event, is stickers, quick responses. Let's enable this extension. Now it's enabled, we will also find it in our installed tab on the top. It also has settings, so you can turn off existing stickers. Stickers are grouped into different sections, Happy Ghost, Penguin, Grey, and you can also add your own very easily with a URL. So here are some fun stickers that you could use. Here are some examples. Click through, have a look, and you can turn off any that you don't think are useful or that you don't like. And I mean, I like the geek section. You can also add your own at the top by clicking the plus button adding a name of the sticker and the URL and even add it to a set. And then you can find them in the custom tab along the top. That's live events. Let's jump onto a next example with healthcare and I'll show you different extensions that are more suited to the healthcare use case. Now we're in the healthcare sample app and this is a really practical use case. So many of these practices are now going online and real-time chat, video calling, sharing images are all really important and useful for the practice as well as the patient. So on the left, I'm gonna log in as the practice. That simulates the login and you can see the list of patients they have. And then on the right, I'm gonna log in as the patient and then they can see a list of practitioners or doctors available and their calendar when they have available slots. So the doctor is gonna to chat to Mr. Jimmy Chu. On the right, the patient is gonna to chat to the doctor. So on the left, the doctor knows which patient they're chatting to. There are some details for the patient, and then you have the chat on the right. And then on the right browser, we have the doctor information. So the patient knows exactly which doctor they're speaking to, and then they've got the real-time chat. So the doctor might write something like this. And the patient might write something like this. Uh, the doctor might say that they have their results back from any tests. And then the doctor can easily attach an x-ray or prescription or anything else. And the patient can see it immediately. The patient can react to that message with an emoji as well. 
We disabled video and audio call for the live events, but for doctor patient, we probably want audio and video call. It makes it a lot easier. And there are some exciting extensions I want to show you in a bit to do with that. So when the patient's ready or when the doctor's ready, they can click on the video icon and start a video call from one person to the other and the person can choose to accept it or decline it. As you can see, I'm in both pictures because I'm talking from one browser to the other. And then we can just hang up the call when we're done. A really useful extension for the doctor patient example is data masking. So let's enable that extension. And now the extension's enabled. If we go to the installed extensions list, you can see that data masking is now enabled. And then from Comet Chat's platform from the admin section, we can go to settings on data masking and enable or disable certain features within that extension. Do we want to drop the message? What kind of masks do we want? Do we want email, phone numbers? And so if you've got any custom data masking that you want, if you have any specific data or data formats, you can easily add a regex or a list of regex to mask out that data. Let's enable email for now and hit save. Now the doctor's gonna say they've got their prescription ready. And the patient might naturally reply, But the great thing is that the extension has now data masked the email, so no private information like that is shared between people. And the doctor can reply with, you'll find it in this app, because an app like this for doctors and patients will probably have some support to handle prescription. So it's really good that it doesn't leave the system, and that way you can prevent people trying to circumvent any application features, but still have the flexibility of the regex, which allows you to have any format of any data that you want to mask out. And you may be thinking, well, with audio or video calls, there's less of a log of information, whereas when we're typing here, we can clearly see that someone's asked, send it to my email, and the doctor has replied, no, I won't be available in the app. So there is that audit log, that history, if there is any confusion in the future. And you are right, with a video or audio call, there could be some confusion. There's an extension you can add that solves this problem, voice transcription. So if it's an audio or a video call, it will transcribe the audio into text. Therefore, there is an audit lock. I'll show you this in a future video, but doesn't that sound really exciting? Next, I want to show you the sample app that we missed out in the middle, Community. And I'll show you some custom extensions that are perfect for the community use case. So on the left, I've logged in as Danielle, and on the right, I've logged in as Tyson. As you saw earlier on, we do have the tabs along the bottom. We have our open chats, we have our contact list, also our group chats, and more options about our account. So on the left, as I'm logged in as Danielle, I want to send a message to Tyson. So click on this and say, hey, Tyson. Tyson will get the message immediately in real time from Danielle. And Tyson can click on the message on the left and can also write back. The other thing you can do is also edit messages. So I've written on behalf of Danielle, I'm not bad, but actually I want to say I'm good. So I'm just going to hit edit and write, I am good. You can see it's immediately updated it for both people in their real-time chat. And I've written a similar message again, so you know what, I'm just gonna hover that message and hit delete. And you can see it's been deleted for both people and tells them that this message was deleted. Another example for community is, we might wanna start a group of friends and family about a holiday we're trying to plan together. So we can click on the tab at the bottom left for groups. We can start a new group, we'll call it family holiday, and we're gonna have it private and we're gonna invite people. So let's create that group. And now we've created the group, we can add members to the group. I'm gonna add Tyson and Colin. Now they've been added. You can see Tyson's been added to the group and gets a notification. If I'm not sure who I've invited, I can also go view members and I can see who's currently in the group and I can change their role. I can ban them and kick them or add more people. Made a typo, but we know we can make an edit. And now I'll fix that typo and it makes sense to everybody. And we can add the photo from last year's event and people can get really excited about making plans for their next family and friends holiday. 
And remember, if you accidentally add someone, you can also remove them. And if we added someone by mistake, we could kick them or ban them. So for example, if someone's being too chatty or rude, I can click on the ban and that person has now been banned. However, if I want to invite them back, I can then just unban that person and they re-return to the group. Being the owner of the group, I have that functionality. And if I would like someone else to be able to manage the group as well, I can change Tyson to not just be a participant, but also a moderator or administrator, and then they will get more options. As a participant, Tyson gets to leave the group and view the members and see also the other assets shared within the group chat. But if Danielle upgrades Tyson to a more powerful user, Tyson then gets a lot more functionality who can also add people, ban people, and do admin features like that. Useful extensions for a family and friend group could be a poll option so they could decide where they're going to go in the world. Also link preview, image optimization. Therefore, if people are on different devices, they get the image optimized more for that device. And you don't want to be on an internet connection, maybe roaming as well in a different country and be sent a 50 meg image file. It'd be more appropriate to receive a smaller file that still gives you an idea of what happened in the photo. You can see it clearly, but it's not something that you're going to scale up massively. So let's add polls. Let's see where people want to go. For the polls one, we, when you go to settings, you do actually need to add your Comet Chat REST API key. So now we've enabled the poll extension. If I go to the bottom here, we can see it appear at the bottom. I can hit create poll and let's ask a question. Where shall we go for next year's holiday? First option, London, UK. Second option, China. We need a few more options. You click plus, Thailand. Let's add another one, India. And let's hit create. Now the poll's created, so people can vote and it's appeared immediately on the other side. So let's vote. Tyson's gonna vote for Thailand. And so Danielle immediately sees the results come in and as only one person's voted for Thailand, it's 100% for Thailand. And these will change as more people in the group vote and as more people are added. And Tyson's very happy and is gonna add an emoji to the group chat. And it appears nice and big. So let's enable reactions and we'll go to the installed list as well. And we can also add our REST API key as we did before as well. Then we go back to our chat. You can see we've now added a reaction to someone else's message. And Tyson's so excited about going to Thailand, potentially, for all the other group members vote on that destination, that they found a link and a possible example of a hotel they would like to go to. And Tyson shares the link. And it looks like a boring link, but there's an extension that solves this, which is Link Preview. Let me show it to you. If we go to our extension list and click on Link Preview, we can add that extension. And then we go to our installed list and we'll see Link Preview is there and there are no settings for Link Preview. It works as magic straight out of the box. Now, if I paste that link again, you can see it looks more friendlier. It comes up with a thumbnail, an example of what's on the link with a title and description. Therefore, you can get people even more excited about your link so they can click on it and go see more for more information. As I mentioned before, some people might be roaming or might be on 3 or 4G and or might not have a great connection where they are. So to make it easier for them when someone shares a photo, you can do thumbnail generation where it generates three different sized images and the best image size for that user so they can have a better experience. And on our list of installed extensions, there are no settings for thumbnail generation. It does everything out of the box. And Tyson is still so excited that they want to share an image from their last trip together in Thailand. We okay, hit the plus sign, hit on the image sign, click on the image that you want to send, and it's going to upload and create different thumbnails depending on which device you're using. So again, it's super efficient and it happens for you automatically without any extra effort. Oh, apart from clicking the extension button, but that's pretty easy. Another great feature is you can do inline replies. For example, the main conversation has moved on now, but someone might want to reply to a link or a message that was shared further up. So by hovering the image, just like we added a reaction before, we can also click on reply in a thread. And now it appears on the side and we can say, oh, that looks amazing. And so now the conversation can be threaded so it doesn't get too messy in the main chat. And the reply notification appears on the other person's chat and they can also continue the conversation in the thread. As you can see in this video, we've had a lot of fun. We've got a lot of features and a lot of practical examples with not a lot of effort. 
So let's recap. We built a React app from scratch and we added Comets Chat's real-time chat to our new React application and we're able to get a chat app up and running really quickly. And we did a video call as an example and shared an image. And then we went to the use case where we talked about live events, where you might reduce the functionality, remove audio and video calls. And then we went to the use case of healthcare where it's patient and doctor, and you might need to mask some data so no private information like email is shared and everything is kept on the platform. And we also spoke about transcription, so therefore any conversation that happens through video and audio call, you can still keep an audit log of what has been discussed. Therefore, there's no confusion in the future and people can refer back to it later on. And then we did community where we had a chat where we also created a group with our friends and family to plan our next holiday. And we looked at very extensions, but some of the exciting ones were poll. It was really easy and simple to create a poll, just like adding a picture or a photo, sharing that with the group. Create a poll, people can vote on their destination, and then people can react to each other's messages. And also we had link previews, get people more excited about the links that you're sharing, so they're more likely to click it and go and find out more information. You can see the extensions behind me, there are lots, and there are more coming all the time. Visit cometchat.com for more information, and we have more demos to follow. Let us know if there's anything in particular that you would like to see. So now's the time to bring real-time conversation to any app that you have out there, be it mobile, be it web, and bring your community, clients, customers, and users all together on your app and your platform in real time. Head over to Comet Chat and create an account for free so you can go try it out for yourself. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification right next to the thumbs up button so you get notified every time Comet Chat posts a new video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to Comet Chat's YouTube channel for more videos like this.